welcome to the regular council meeting of Tuesday, March 21st, 2023 at 440 in cha uh, council chambers and via Zoom. We acknowledge that the town of Kirkland Lake is located on the traditional territory of Algonquin peoples, including Beaver House First Nation and unceded territory of other Indigenous peoples. We recognize the presence of Algonquin, Anishinaabe, Ojibwe, Cree, and Métis people in our community since time immemorial and honor their stewardship and care of these lands. We hereby affirm our continued commitment and responsibility to reconciliation. Call to order and a moment of silence. Item number two, approval of the agenda. Moved by Councillor Janice Ranger, seconded by Councillor Lad Shaba, be it resolved that the agenda for the regular meeting of council held on Tuesday, March 21st, 2023, be approved as circulated. All in favor? Opposed? Item carried unanimous. Item number three, declaration of pecuniary interest. Councillor Owens. Yes, so item 7.2, I don't, in discussion with the uh, interior commissioner, I don't have a pecuniary interest. But as, because there's specific criteria, but because my name appears on the letter, uh, just for the optics of it, I'm going to step away from the table for this part of the discussion. Okay, thank you. Anything further? Yeah. Councillor Yeah, I think I'm in the same boat as well. I don't think that I uh, have a pecuniary interest, but uh, for advice, I've been told to, I guess, when in doubt, just declare one. So I'm going to be declaring one on item number item six point five. Okay, thank you. Anything further? Uh, I'm going to read that. Oh yes. <laughs> no, because I don't have any interest. Yes, yeah, the interior commissioner was very clear. I don't have an interest, so I don't have to declare anything. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, um, I like Shava. I'm declaring direct deem or. Uh, indirect pecuniary interest on the agenda of the meeting dated March 21st, 2023. It's an open session. Agenda item is 6.5. The agenda title is Parade Permit, uh, Holy Name Parish Way of the Cross Annual Parade. It is indirect because I belong to this uh, body. And my nature of interest is that I belong to the Holy Name Church. Signed by myself. That shall. Thank you, sir. Item number four, petitions and delegations. None are noted. Item number five, acceptance of minutes and recommendations. 5.1, March 7th, 2023. Moved by Councilor Casey Owens, seconded by Councilor Dolly Dykins. Be resolved that Council approve the minutes of the following meeting. Minutes of the regular meeting of council held Tuesday, March 7th, 2020. All in favor? Opposed? None. Motion carried unanimous. Item number six reports of municipal officers and communications. 6.1 request to cancel sales of Green McKinley Avenue and lot 74 and 75 M112 on Folger and Jenna McNaughton, planning administrator. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you to Council, I have a report here that's requesting to cancel two land sales that have previously been approved. Um, so the first one we'll talk about is 3 McKelvey. Um, this was passed at a meeting in November 2021. Since that time, um, we attempted to make contact with the applicant um, through our legal team and through theirs, and we haven't been able to get any response. Um, we did send some letters and have made some phone calls. We just haven't been able to get in contact with this individual. So we're just looking at um, canceling this land sale. Um, there is a small amount of $180 that will be associated with closing this file. Um, the second one is for two lots on Folger Street. Um, this land sale was approved last year in April. Um, and the applicant has since requested to cancel the land sale. 
Um, the there is no legal cost associated with closing this file. Any questions or concerns? None noted. I'll have the reading of the motion. Moved by Councillor Rick Owen, seconded by Councillor Patrick Kiley. Be resolved. Oh, sorry, sorry. So, yeah, um, Councillor Madam Mayor. Um, yeah. so, mm -hmm. um, what happens with when do we put it up for sale? Like, does it come back to Council for consideration, or what's that process? Mm -hmm. Three, Madam Mayor, two, Councillor Dickens. What we do is we put the the property back on the surplus land list, um, so it is available for sale to any individual that would um, like to submit an application. Uh, we don't necessarily advertise that it's for sale, but it is on that surplus land listing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. No, no problem. Moved by Councillor Rick Owen, seconded by Councillor Patrick Kiley. Be it resolved that report number 2023 DEV 14, entitled Request to Council Sales of Prima Kelvin Avenue and Lot 74 and 75 and 112 on Boulder Street be received. And that council canceled one sale at three McKelvey Avenue to Mubashar Hussein, and that council canceled one sale of lots 74 and 75 and one from Fulter Street to Woody Kursanti. And finally, that our bylaw repealing bylaw number 21 098 and bylaw number 2230 be brought forward for three readings on March 21st, 2023. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. And we'll carry it unanimous. 6.2 Early Access Agreements with Hydro One Networks Incorporated, K4 Transmission Line, Denim Mountain Planning Administrator. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you to Council, we received a request from Hydro One Networks um, to expand their existing easement just slightly outside of what they have. Um, this is in relation to the K4 Transmission Line. We had a request similar to this um, at some point last year, but they've come to realize that they need to actually extend up a little bit further. Um, so they are just looking at um, entering into an early access agreement at this time, and they will be bringing forward the easement agreements after they are able to survey out the land. There is some consideration that they will give us for entering onto our land. So. It's um, about 22,500 for each application. So that includes the access agreement, um, signing of the option agreement, and then accepting an appraisal report. And then there's an additional 115% of the appraised market value. So we won't know that until they're actually finished with the survey of the property. Um, so they're hoping to have this done. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions, comments? None noted. Before we have the reading of the motion, I just wanted to say this is Jenna's last council meeting before wow. she leaves us for maternity leave. And I just want to thank her so greatly for her expertise and her reports when she comes to council. She's always a pleasure because she always gives the best, most clear reports. And we just, we are going to miss you. And um, we want to say congratulations. Thank you. And we will see you in a year. So, yes. So, Madam Clerk, we'll have the reading of the book. Oh, sorry, Councillor Shabba. I hope you bring the baby to the council meeting for the first time. Oh, yeah. What's the deliberations? I'll be here. Uh, uh, yeah. Mayor, just, uh, mm -hmm. And while we're on that subject, I'd like to welcome Brooklyn Absolutely. in the team. It's kind of nice to see a former student, like this gray hair is there for a reason. <laughs> it's nice to see former students coming back to us as employees. And so it's, it's welcome aboard. Excellent. Very nice. Okay, Madam Clerk. <laughs> Moved by Councillor Janice Rinker, seconded by Councillor La Chaba. Be resolved that report number 2023 DEV 15 entitled Early Access Agreements with Hydro One Network Inc. K4 Transmission Line be received, and that the Mayor Municipal Clerk be authorized to exclude four early access agreements and all appropriate easement documents as be as may be required by Hydro One Networks Inc. And finally, that a bylaw authorizing the execution of early access agreements and any related easement agreements and subsequent amendments be brought forward for three readings on March 21st, 2023. All in favor? Opposed? I didn't care, unanimous. Thank, Thank you so much, Jenna. Item number 6.3, Town of Kirkland Lake, 10-year 
Road Reconstruction Plan, Director of Public Works. Thank you for having me this evening uh, through you, Madam Mayor and Council. I'm here to speak about our newly developed 10 year road reconstruction plan. So, as a whole, a plan like this can become particularly useful to forecast capital expenditures and brings a new level of transparency um, for our council members and our residents. Uh, please note that when we speak of reconstruction, it means the full replacement of the infrastructure, uh, which are the water mains, storm water system, the sanitary system. It also speaks to the replacement of the concrete curbs, gutters, sidewalks, and of course the asphalt surface. Uh, this is important to note because there's some years within this 10-year plan that you'll notice that only involves asphalt replacement. Uh, the Public Works Department was once equipped with an engineering team whose one of the main tasks was to prepare these projects for future construction. Um, now that we don't have an engineering team, we have to fully rely on the services of the design consultant uh, to put these projects together for us so that we can be ready to issue construction tenders when funding is available. Uh, keeping in mind that it can take up to a full year to design a project, our goal is to design one project per year, while at the same time, tender out one construction project per year, again, depending on funding availability. So for 2023, it's our year number one, and this would involve the design to reconstruct part of Taylor Avenue. And since we don't currently have a design project to put out to tender this year, we opted for an asphalt only contract for year one. This would involve pulverizing the existing asphalt and replacing it with a new super paved layer of asphalt. Um, I'm sure that a key question that some may have in their mind is, well, how were these areas selected and not other areas? Um, within the last two years, we had our roads professionally assessed by a company that's called StreetScan. Um, the data they provided shows us the existing condition of the asphalt surface for every single street. Another major factor that has to be considered is the age of the infrastructure. Well, over 50% of our infrastructure dates back to the 1930s. So using these two major factors, along with other factors such as traffic density, safety consideration, and road types, well, this is the selection that we came up with. Yes, there are other options. There's probably many other options. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, with the information that was available to us, our department has narrowed it down to these projects for the next 10 years. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I definitely, before I open for debate, I definitely want to congratulate you and your team. Um, this is something that council has um, asked for right. um, time and time again, and you just knocked it out of the park as far as I'm concerned. It's really good to see measurable um, targets yeah. and to be open and transparent saying these are, even though we want to do these projects, it all depends on funding. So just excellent report. Thank, Thank you, you so, for, so much for that. I'll open the floor for comments. Councilor Ranger. To you, Madam Mayor, to, uh, I, no, I don't know your name, I haven't met Stephane you. Stefan Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, Stefan, it's more of an aesthetic question, but I have seen current trends where instead of between the roadway and the sidewalk, um, I'll call it between the curb actually and the sidewalk, instead of grass, pavement, or asphalt, is that a continued plan as, even within the residential areas? Uh, well, within the residential areas, it's usually practice to try to reinstate the existing conditions. So if you would see uh, grass boulevards, and then that's what we would reinstate unless somebody would make uh, or find a reason to change that. So we'll, that would be our goal. It would be to reinstate in the same fashion that for the existing conditions. Some things that may change is the type of curves, for example, instead of having regular concrete curves where we tend to favor drop curbs. It's uh, less damaging to our graders. And as you notice, the, the grader plows are very aggressive on these curbs and they rip them apart over the years. So uh, by having a drop curb, for example, we'll stretch out the longevity of those curbs. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. 
Councillor Shaba. Yeah, thank you very much uh, to you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I don't, uh, I'm just trying to find out uh, the stuff that you sent to us, but I just put my iPad back just now. Um, you indicated that, uh, I guess, the, the first one to be done would be just to uh, uh, resurface. Right? Did that, did I get that right? From now to the first year, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, yeah. Taking the old ash code out and then put the new one in there. Correct. And what we're opting uh, a method of saving costs is if there's no reason to fully remove the asphalt and discard of it, which is expensive when it comes to the hauling, uh, another method is to pulverize it in place when suitable. Uh, this is usually very favorable as far as the quality of the underlying layer because it will mix that asphalt with the granular area underneath, giving you a better solid base. So this is something that is usually very favorable. Uh, that's what we're yeah, I understand that, but what I'm going with my question is that if that's all we're doing, and uh, we always talk about aging pipes underneath those streets, mm -hmm. so we're not really addressing those. If if there if there are in where you do now, if they're not, I guess they're not. So I'm just thinking maybe sure. why why not kill two birds with one stone if you're going to be doing this street? Mm -hmm. uh, and I know a lot of uh, residents get very. Uh, very, uh, shall we say, upset, you know, all of a sudden construction this year, and then they're back next year, and then they're back next year. So really, is there a way to not uh, at least get a little bit of more funding to get those pipes replaced, and then do your resurfacing, then you're done with that straight for the next 20 years or so? Yes, it's definitely favorable to usually change the infrastructure at the same time, but there's an enormous dollar value associated to it which is why that we have to take the time to, to fully have them designed before putting them up to tender. Because when you're dealing with the infrastructure, you're not talking about hundreds of thousands, you're talking about millions. Mm -hmm. So th that's the reason why we have to design it one year and then hopefully construct the next, or when it comes to that. Mm -hmm. uh, but for year one, like you said, it's just asphalt and we selected areas where only asphalt would be better suited instead of going and digging up the, the infrastructure because the infrastructure is deemed young enough on those areas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's my point. Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Councillor Owens. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I'm excited to see this. Finally, we can have a plan people. Uh, I wouldn't want to be on the list of the streets that are not being fixed. But <laughs> unfortunately, there's just so many streets we can fix at a time. Uh, my question is, though, in previous years, um, like last year, the paving on certain of, or a few of our streets didn't get done until October. Mm -hmm. The week after it started to snow, now it's melting and that asphalt's already broken. It's already heaving. There's huge cracks going through it. So in this case, are we going to wait again till, I know it has to do with the contractor availability, but are we going to wait till the end of the summer to do this? Or are we going to be able to start earlier and get these done? So we can actually use streets that are not broken and fix them. Uh, through your mayor to, to counselor. Um, the sooner the budget gets approved, the sooner we can send out a tender for Uh Paving contractors definitely would prefer that municipality comes out with a paving contract in the spring rather than middle of summer because they heavily concentrate on their larger MTO contracts for asphalt. So we end up at the end of the season where they're trying to fill us in best they can. Uh, you're absolutely correct. The sooner in the season that we get the tender out, the better availability they'll have to help us out. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Going around the table, Councillor Owen. Yeah, through you, Madam Mayor. Um, I can hardly sit in my seat. I'm so happy, so excited. This is a moment for record. Ricky is happy at council. That's great. I've been pushing for ever since I got on council to get away from the year to year planning. And I was only asking for five years, and you come up with a 10 year plan. So you get a gold star for sure. Um, the question about infrastructure under the road, uh, tweets near road, that was supposed to be done a number of years ago, and it was in a budget. And for some reason, it didn't get done. My understanding is that the uh, infrastructure is not under the road on Tweets there, it's off to the side. And we have other streets in town where the infrastructure is not under the road. And we do have maps, although not always 100% accurate, of which streets they are. 
And uh, so I think that should be taken into consideration when we're considering how to stretch our money. Um, if, we, if we have a street that needs to be done, like, and it doesn't have infrastructure underneath it, maybe we do that ahead of another street that needs to be done but has infrastructure underneath it. And in terms of, of curbs, in my travels in North Northern Ontario, I noticed that most communities our size don't have curbs or they don't have uh, the amount of curbs that we have. Um, it, my, I, if memory serves me right, there's no curbs on Tweedsman. I don't think. Uh, you're correct, it's all ditches. It's so, all ditches. so why would we put curbs back? Why would we put curbs in? If we've got a system there, it's already working. When I drive through Englehart, I don't see a lot of curbs. When I drive through uh, Chaplo, I didn't see any curbs. Um, I, I'm just looking at ways to, to stretch the limited funds that we have. And these are just, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not saying do it. Um, the other thing is the ratepayers have to understand that we have a 10 year plan and this council is hoping to follow through for the following first four years. But if the money is not there, we cannot continue with the plan. The plan will be there. And when the money's available, the next council or this council can pick it up where we left off. Because I don't want people thinking, oh, this is great. My road's going to be done next year. Well, hopefully your road's going to be done next year if we have the money. And again, thank you so much for a plan, a long term plan. Thank you, Councillor Owen. Councillor Kiley? Yeah, I got to hand it to you. As Rick said, uh, you should get the gold star for this. Um, too many years in the past, it's been like uh, wherever the dark lands. Uh, I, I really think that this, this has been done professionally and, and well thought out. So uh, congratulations on, on your part and your department. Uh, for curiosity, the infrastructure on Taylor Avenue, how old is it? 1930 to 1935. Which is uh, extremely common for all the streets surrounding it, actually. They're all of the same age. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Dickens? Uh, to you, Madam Mayor, uh, to you, the Director. Um, I echo a lot of the comments. I'm very... Um, uh, hopeful with uh, with the plan and it, it gives us a, a guide um, for our finances. Um, I do have a question though. Last summer, um, somebody from the town was going around with, uh, I think it was pink or orange paint where sidewalks were really uneven. And um, I only noticed this because you, you said Tweed's Mirror um, up to McPhee, but just past McPhee is the school. Yes. And that's where a lot of those uh, lines are. So is that totally going to be disregarded under this plan or, or is there a plan to fix some of the really grievous um, sidewalks? Because there's a school there as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, to mayor, to councilor. Um, yes, you're absolutely correct. Um, our road reconstruction plan here does not speak solely to, to sidewalks. It would speak to sidewalks within these areas that we want to reconstruct. Um, it would be nice to also have a 10 year sidewalk replacement plan. Um, but no one's going to be happy with the numbers. <laughs> Um, so what I'm trying to do, what our department is trying to do right now is to at least have funding available within our operation budget so that we can at least replace some during the summer, get what's at least worse. The, the orange paint that you saw, yes, uh, the roads department gets our students sometimes to identify these and we try to rectify as many as we can during the summer, but <clears throat> our budget only allows us to do so much and we have a lot of site work. Um, Surprisingly, for the size of town, there's a lot of concrete side, but that's something that I can prepare uh, a replacement plan. But it depends if you guys want that. Um, just to reiterate with 
um, Stefan said, um, the orange paint is actually a standard, is it not within? Like, it needs to meet our minimum maintenance standards. Yeah, so, and that comes from what regulation or what? Is it MTO? It's the same regulation that we utilize for our winter maintenance okay. uh, program. Mm -hmm. Basically, identify that if you're outside of tolerance for, uh, I'm just giving an example, but if there's a bump of 10 millimeters or more, it needs to be rectified within X amount of days. Uh, it's difficult to meet all those deviances, like the, the deficiencies that we have on our sidewalks. They're just very, very new. There's a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> so that spray paint, it definitely comes from a regulation. Like, this is what I'm getting at. That, yes. Yeah, it's not just something that the town of Kirkland Lake chose to do. It's actually um, what is stated to do in a government regulation. Correct. We're, we're trying to identify what does not meet regulation. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, Councilor Ranger? Through you, Madam Mayor, to step in. And this may not be a question that you can answer. <clears throat> um, and maybe it goes back to council. Has there been any discussion or conversation through past councils or through your department to look and assess at having sidewalks on only one side of the street and or what would be the determination to remove curves as Council Owen had had a conversation about? Is there been conversation that was done and then this list was made or is this something that would be done in between? this project and the amount of money that's potentially could be sought after. And on that same note, so it's a two part question, has there been any conversation about increasing or adding four way stops in these areas that we're looking at also um, doing repaving? Okay, true. Um, I'll start by speaking about in regards to the curves, for example, that, that you mentioned, uh, removing curves or eliminating curbs that are already in place is probably not something we want to entertain because usually the curbs are put in place if there are, like on trees near, there's ditching. So it's either you have ditches or you redirect your water with curbs to catch basins. Um, and so you'll have to ask the, the, your other question. Um, the specific one. Well, just removing sidewalks so they're only on one side of the street right. instead of having them on both sides. Uh, I think that the, the sidewalks will have to be reviewed as a whole because there's a lot of sidewalks that we don't maintain during the winter months. Some of them look a lot worse or it looks like they've been abandoned. Uh, I agree that some should be removed and abandoned and reassess as to whether they're even useful. I do agree that that's something that can be looked at, yes. Any further questions? Councillor Owen? Yes, so Your Worship, if we're looking at removing sidewalks, then I suggest we have public meetings. Because I bought my house, it had sidewalks on either side of the road. Mm -hmm. Council decided to redo my, well, they redid the street and they took the sidewalks out and I had young children. Yeah, no okay, so I don't believe, if we're talking about removing sidewalks, I don't believe that we can do that without the public consultation. It wouldn't be done. Because I may not have bought my house if I had known there wasn't going to be sidewalks for my kids to play on. So, Thank you. Yeah. Anything further from council? No. Thank you, Stephan. I will have the reading of the motion. Moved by Councillor Casey Owen, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen. Be it resolved that report number 2023 PW2 entitled Town of Eastland Lake 10 Year Road Reconstruction Plan be received for information. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. Item carried unanimous. Item 6.4 Kirkland Lake Drinking Water System Operational Plan Update. The Van Dorsen, the Director of Public Works again. <laughs> Thank you. Are you, Madam Mayor and Council? I'm here to present the updated operational plan for Kirkland Lakes Drinking Water System, uh, which was prepared by Aqua. Uh, since the last revised plan in 2019, our CAO and our mayor have changed. This is considered to be a major change for these plans. Um, therefore, the new plans. The new plan needs to be re-endorsed by the new CAO and the new mayor on behalf of council. Um, all other changes that were made to the operational plan are considered extremely minor and have no bearing on the overall scope of the plan. Uh, we're asking council to approve and re-endorse the updated drinking water systems operational plan. 
I do have Brian Springer here with me today, who's our manager of operations and environmental services, uh, to whom you can address any specific questions you may have regarding this updated plan. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> uh, just a uh, uh, slight correction. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the plan will be endorsed by the mayor and the clerk. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'll be on the yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. Get Okay, thank you for that. Any questions? Councillor Shaba. Yeah, through you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, since you're here, we happen to have you here. Can you say a little bit more about some of the uh, things that uh, the changes that uh, you guys are uh, talking about? Well, actually, I'm uh, not anticipating. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yes. Um, Madam Mayor and uh, Councillors. Um, these reports are actually reviewed annually and it's the best management practice so it's a continuous improvement and what you see here are very uh minor changes you know it'll be a word that's been changed from and to something else uh very 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 minor actually okay thank you anything further from council Councillor Owen. Thank you. To you, Your Worship. Um, I'm just looking at um, in Procedure 3, 3.1, and I think I know the answer, but I'd like a clarification because it says Aqua is contracted operating authority for the Kirkland Lake drinking water system, which includes the Lionel Share water filtration plant and the Kirkland Lake distribution system. But the Kirkland distribution system is is uh, proper, is looked after by town employees. Um, is this referring to? And I can't. I, I apologize. I don't remember the um, the title. But I know we appoint Aqua as the overall. Uh, Your yeah. Your, um, is that what that refers to? That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anything further from council? Comments? Questions? Okay, thank you, gentlemen. I'll have a reading of the motion. Moved by Councillor Patrick Kiley, seconded by Councillor Janet Granger. Be it resolved that report number 2023 PW4 entitled Perkin Lake Drinking Water System mm -hmm. Operational Plan update be received, and that Council approve the amendments thereto and endorse the corporation of the Town of Kirkland Lake's Drinking Water System Operational Plan dated March 1st, 2023, as updated. And that the mayor and municipal clerk be authorized to execute the required documentation showing council's endorsement of the corporation of the town of Kirkland Lake's updated drinking water system operational plan. And finally, that an execution by law be brought forward for three readings on March 21st, 2023. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. Item carried unanimous. Thank you so much. Item 6.5. Request for parade, parade permit, holy name of Jesus' parent, way of the cross, annual parade, Jennifer Montoy, Municipal Court. Uh, good evening, Madam Mayor and members of Council. The holy name of Jesus Parish is requesting permission to host their annual Way of the Cross celebration parade on Friday, April 7th, between the hours of 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. In terms of agency comments and concerns, the town's uh, public works and fire and emergency services department cited no objections with the request. Uh, the Kirkland Lake Detachment of the Ontario Provincial Police also cited no objections or concerns with the request. Um, as noted in the report, historically no fees or certificate of insurance have been collected from the requesting organization. It is my understanding that the parade predominantly carries on by use of sidewalks for venue, from venue to venue. Uh, there are no formal road closure requirements or statutory public notices uh, or statutory public notice requirements. Uh, the parish will be encouraged to contact the Kirkland Lake Detachment of VOTP to secure a police escort for the duration of the parade. And to note, the parish had requested um, uh, for a member representative of council to perform a reading at the municipal office on Kirkland Street on behalf of the town during the parade and Councillor Kylie has so volunteered. And this is my summary of the report, and I'm available to answer any questions. Um, any questions and comments? Councillor Owen? Yeah, this uh, parade has gone on for, I would say, at least 30 years without incident. And um, it's certainly something that's looked forward to. It's it's uh, it's also a multi-denominational uh, parade. They encourage the other churches to take part in it as well. So 
I certainly have no problem with uh, their request. Anything further? Any comments, questions from council? That noted, I'll have a reading of the motion. Moved by Councillor Casey Owens, seconded by Councillor Dolly Dykin to be it resolved at report number 2023 CLK 10 entitled Request for Parade Permit, Holy Name of Jesus Parish, Way of the Cross Annual Parade be received, and that Council directed that a parade permit be issued to the Holy Name of Jesus Parish for April 7, 2023. And finally, the Council hereby waive the $100 permit fee requirements as outlined in bylaw 8665. All in favor? Opposed? I am carried unanimous. Can we please have Mr. Shabba enter? <laughs> Thank you. Item 6.6, 6, 2023 Operational and Capital Budget, Lloyd Crocker, Treasurer. And before Mr. Crocker begins, it's just a reminder that we are receiving this for information this evening to allow us time to review and digest before the public meetings and departmental divi uh, and divisional presentations on March 29th and the special meeting for capital budget presentation on April 3rd. Budget deliberations will start for us in earnest um, at the meeting on April 11th. As Mr. Crawford will explain, council will be able to email any questions to Mayor Treasurer and CAO throughout this process. Uh, you will receive answers, and then um, the treasurer will bring all those questions back to council for transparency. But I'll allow um, Mr. Crawford to um, explain the process. <laughs> so thank you, sir. Yeah, I'll do so. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Alan CAO. Um, we invite the mayor to members of council. Uh, when staff first began the internal budget process a number of weeks ago, our first draft budget would have resulted in a presentation to council of approximately a 15% increase in tax levy. Recognizing we need to do better, staff worked diligently to find efficiencies to reduce this increase. A lot of tough decisions were made and challenging discussions were had. But we reached an increase of approximately 4.35% that would enable the town to deliver the services that our rate payers expect in a fiscally prudent manner, while also planning for and investing in the future. This 4.35% translates to an increase of $90 per year for the average residential property owner. It's important to remember that Town Corcoran Lake has been able to increase reserves and reserve funds over the last three years. Treasury is recommending using approximately 2.5 billion in reserves and reserve funds to limit the tax levy increase to the approximate 4.35%. Although we are not yet able to properly forecast 2022 reserves and reserve funds, given the year end and audit for 2022 are not yet complete, we believe the amount of reserves and reserve funds will increase for 2022, given some large tax supplementals that were received, that's good news. So why the 4.35% increase? Well, there are lots of factors, but I just want to mention a few. Labor and related costs have been affected across all departments. The pay equity and compensation review that was completed and implemented resulted in a 3% increase. The annual cost of living adjustment increases 2%, and many employees will be still to receive a step increase in their positions for 2023. Council also approved a new asset management plan in 2022. The asset management plan took into account the core assets of municipality. In order to maintain, update, or replace these assets going forward, the asset management plan recommended a 1.7% increase annually to the tax levy. Also, it's important to remember that this number will increase once the new asset management plan with all assets, including buildings and equipment, is complete, to be completed in 2023 and 2024. Also, there are many factors that are beyond our control. High inflation rates, high interest rates, supply chain issues, and yes, COVID is still around. 
all having impacts on all missile budgets, not just Crooked Link. For example, Carver's Lake, Carver Lakes, looking at 3% increase this year. London, 3.1% increase. Thunder Bay, 4.4. Sudbury, 4.6. North Bay, 4.61. Huntsville, 5.29. Toronto, 5.5 and a township of tiny 10.82. It should be noted that most of the small municipalities have not yet completed the budget process. Also, this information was taken from public announcements, not directly from the municipality. But the point being, the days of zero budgeting or minimal increases are most likely over. We are in a new reality. Again, the 4.35% increase or $7.50 per month increase for residential property owners in 2023 enables the town to provide the services that our residents expect, while we also take into account our future plans. In other words, we must keep planning and investing for the future and make the appropriate investments in not only our infrastructure, for example, but we must also need to invest in our workplace our people are staff. I will now ask one Mr. Walker to dive a little bit deeper. Thank you very much. Madam Mayor and Council. I guess I'm done. There's it. <laughs> you got a big uh, Forgive me for the mask and the squealing voice, but I'm just kind of getting over a nasty bug. Uh, the report has an awful lot of information in it. It's kind of summarizing a lot of what you're going to see in the 25 page budget for you. There's a couple of things I'd like to emphasize. You may have already heard them, but I really do want to emphasize it. The process is a little bit different this year. I've you know, been here for a year now, so we're trying to make the process a little bit more expansive, a little more complete. And, you know, and next year we'll do the same thing. We'll probably add in some more. You know, reporting and maybe get to it a bit earlier or later, depending on the wishes of council. Um, so there's a couple of things that really, you know, the, the CAO mentioned the reserves. So I'm expecting the reserves to be very similar to what they are right now, which is in the package. I can't say that for sure until we're finished the 2022 year end. Um, it was mentioned that we had a large tax supp supplemental. So basically what that means is that there was a, an assessment that came on the roll and we, and we got a fairly large chunk of cash in during, from, as, a, as a result from that. So that's where I think the reserves are being protected was through this, this process. Um, you heard you know, the, the Gold Star director up here and, and then Councilor Owen is talking about infrastructure and, and I don't wanna, I won't be the Gold Star guy, but a bit of a downer, but the CAO mentioned it too. We have not really fully explored what the effect of the equipment side of our our infrastructure, if you want to call it that, is going to be. And this year's a poster child for that. And you see it in the in the capital budget, especially. There's not an awful lot of what is is what we call infrastructure. There's a paving contract. A lot of it is equipment and projects for for this and, and for that. Um, but it's, I don't think it's an atypical year. I think what you're going to see is you're going to see a list like that every single year, whether it's from Aqua or from Works or from, you know, from uh, community services or TPR or whoever it might be. Every year there's going to be stuff on that list. The asset management plan is going to help us um, prepare for it. I'm not really sure how well it does that at this point. Um, but certainly there's an awful lot of effort going into it to, to produce data that we can start to think about this. First plus that 10 year equipment plan that, that's out there is actually fairly close to what the asset management plan was saying on a very draft basis. So, you know, that's the, the downer part of my comments. It's that, you know, there is another half, maybe even bigger than half, even though we, we equate infrastructure with the really huge dollars, well, you know, it costs four hundred thousand dollars to buy a loader. It costs five hundred thousand dollars to buy a fire truck. Uh, it only takes two or three pieces of equipment a year to quickly outstrip the infrastructure when it comes to pure dollars. So, 
anyways, you're, you're going to see that when we get to the capital discussions and, and you know, it's kind of something to keep in mind. Um, with regards to the questions, I am very open to questions. And I may not be able to get back to you before the meeting, but I guarantee you, if you give me a question, you know, in between these meetings, I will be prepared to answer the meeting, the question at the next meeting. If I can't get it back to you in a reasonable amount of time, we will keep track of them. We will try to make sure that all of them are answered. You know, I'm the treasurer. So, you know, if, if the question is kind of more council oriented, um, I'll probably push back and say, look, that's, that's decisions for you guys to kind of take a run at. If, you know, if you're looking for an understanding of where the dollars are spent, where we want to spend them, or how we're funding them, that's absolutely my bailiwick, and I'll do the best I can. Um, there's some, some of the actuals. So I always remember from last year when when he asked a question, I said, well, the actuals aren't perfect. Well, I can say kind of the same thing as this year, is the actuals aren't perfect. In particular, the cemetery and the TPR, they have kind of a different model of reporting. The cemetery has a trust model where the monies are treated a little bit differently. So it takes me a little bit longer and the staff to kind of get that in order. So plain and simple, I just haven't got to it yet. And TPR is similar as well. It's funded a little bit differently than everybody else. So it takes us a little bit longer to factor that in. So the revenue side of TPR is light. So when you get to the actuals and say, holy smokes, TPR went in the tank this year. We just haven't quite got to the revenue side of it. Excuse me. And it goes to the obvious one. Um, with regard to the schedule, just reiterate what you've already heard, which is so tonight we're just basically putting it in front of you, giving you an opportunity to take a long, hard look at the, at the numbers. And, and uh, again, if you if you want to put questions front and center before we get to next week's meeting, that's perfect. It gives us a better chance to come with properly informed answers, not just going winging it up here and maybe missing it and stuff like that. So um, next week, the 29th, that's the special meeting. So we will start with the open portion, which will be submitted questions from ratepayers and those who show up. They have a three minute limit, I believe. And then we will go into the presentations by the directors. Um, what I've suggested is, you know, while the directors are up here, I'll be up here as well. And that's the time to ask the questions on the operating budget rather than saving them for the end or something like that. Each director has a, knows their little piece of the pie. Um, you can do a better job of answering your questions. So you know, that's ideally the time. But it's, there's going to be some, they're going to have some information uh, speaking to some of the variations you're already seeing with them. Um, so that's kind of what's going to happen on uh, point eight. So then the uh, third, doing the same thing kind of again for capital. There's no open meeting at that point, but the capital is the same idea. We'll just work our way down through it. There's a lot of information in that capital this year. Last year was well, quite a bit lighter, but there's some descriptions there and stuff like that. We used a lot of reserves, and that's really a function of what funding is available. You've heard it a couple of times already. Um, it is very difficult to find funding for, for equipment for that type of capital, which is very, very challenging if it isn't related to, you know, so water and wastewater, there's a little bit of a crossover in some of the funding sources, um, but normal everyday equipment, the, the plows, the graders, the fire trucks and that, there's just almost nothing out there that speaks to them directly. So you are planning around reserves, taxes, stuff like that, debt is kind of the answers when you get to those things. But that's that's on the on the eleventh, uh, sorry, the third, uh, and then the eleventh is when you guys get to tell us what you think. And I don't, you know, you're going to be asking questions over those next two meetings. And when we say budget deliberations, what I, I expect is that's when we're going to make the changes that you want. So you know, if, if you want to move this, change that. The deliberations meeting is kind of when that all comes together, and we. 
we go through that process. Um, obviously, you know, I'll be taking notes the whole time based on your questions and stuff like that to get some idea of where some of you will feel want to go. But, um, you know, the, the, I'm, I'm learning how it works here at this, this, this part of the, the, the job. And, uh, you know, there's a process. So that meeting is really to you know, exercise the process of making changes that, that you guys want. Should we get to that point? And, you know, and of course, we've left another meeting in there just in case, because depending on which year's budget you look at, you know, last year was a woohoo, we got it done. But the year pre previous, it took several meetings. And it takes several meetings. We've built in some time for that. Um, okay. And I think there's a couple other things that, so I made the comment about the reserves not being ready. And there's something else. There's two other things that are kind of budget related, but not entirely budget related. It is certainly my goal to start improving the reporting, what you guys are seeing on the, you know, the, the actual results that are happening. I'm not sure when I will get to something really meaningful for you. But I will promise at this point, you know, I will come back to council with a, I guess a, a reserve report. Once we have some kind of idea of how 2022 affected the reserves, but I'm planning to do the same thing with capital. Um, I'd really like to kind of say, you know, you guys see it once a year, and then <clears throat> last year's kind of gets shuffled off to the side, and you don't necessarily know what happened in that mix. And certainly, there's there's nothing being hidden. We would, we would tell you if something's gone sideways, and you've seen reports for, you know, like the loader, for example, the you know, background. Or, or suddenly we had to come up with 30 grand more because the quote was different than the original quote. So you see, you know, the, the real issues, but I'd like to come, come to council with something that says, here's the project, here's how far we've moved, here's the costs, and whether they're coming forward into, you know, multiple years. Um, so those are a couple of things that are, that are budget related, but they're not kind of happening in the same time frame. Um, that's pretty much most of what I wanted to get. There's a lot of dense information in here and you know, the 25 pages themselves. So uh, if you want to talk about the process tonight, I'm more than prepared. If you want to talk about, you know, like I, you know, I pointed out to you, we have funding sources. So obviously, you know, we have taxation, we have outside funding, we have debt and we have reserves. And that's essentially how we pay for everything that we do. And any of those kind of, Big picture stuff, be happy to talk about tonight. Details are going hard next week. Okay, as Mr. Crocker said, we're going to try not to get too much into the weeds this evening with questions. We're going to try to keep it a high level because we do have lots of time to get into the weeds coming up. So with that, Alliance, I'll uh, open the floor to questions. Councillor Shabba. Thank you very much, uh, Your Worship. I, this is not a question, it's just I'm looking for... Uh, I'm looking for an item. I can't find it here. Is there a way you could direct me to it? The item being, uh, I don't know if you were here, uh, when we uh, sold uh, Hockey Heritage uh, for a certain amount. I'm not too sure it was a public uh, knowledge. I'm not too sure where that amount would be uh, uh, placed. In, in the so That's all I want to know. Just it won't be in these figures. It happened in 2021. Okay. The actual re the revenue from it happened in 2021. It was put into a reserve, if I'm not mistaken. I that was that was okay. So it'll be part of one of the reserves. Thank you. <laughs> Councilor Ranger. Thank you. Through you, Madam Mayor. Um, are the are you using last year's bills from um, these services, THU and DSAB? Is that what I will be seeing in this? Or are they left blank right now until those budgets or yeah. those bills have been approved? A bit of a mix. So the police services budget, we have a good idea already of what they're going to charge us for 2023. And, and a couple of counselors have approached me about the DSAB and the health unit. So I put in their, their you know, the range of their discussions at this point until they lock in their budgets. So there is increases. It's not going to be entirely absorbed or between the next few weeks or suddenly the DSAB and the health unit lock in their budgets. Um, so hopefully we're pretty close on those ones as well. Councillor Owen. Yes, through you, Madam Mayor, to our 
Treasurer, I just want to thank you for putting together a budget in the form for dummies of accounting. Um, even I can follow the figures here, and I joke about it, but I really do appreciate it because I don't deal with numbers every day, and I don't deal with uh, spreadsheets and all that kind of thing, which is tends to be what we got in the past. Here we've got three columns, easy to read. You know, we've got the requests, we've got the, the graphics, which are very good. And, you know, so I appreciate that. Thank you. To speak to that, and we're using new software now. We're starting to use new software and playing with it a little bit. Um, the survey, you know, that was done kind of leads to some of the presentation that you're seeing. And, and helps you guys inform your decision making as well. You can see we had good responses. Yeah. You know, almost 100 people, which is a lot more than last year. Now we rushed it a bit last year, but again, um, yeah. So you know, will you be better next year too? For it's kind of a step process for us here. Absolutely, Councillor Kiley. Yeah, I echo what Councillor Owen has uh, stated. Um, it's nice to get this clean report. Uh, we used to get a, a bundle of spreadsheets uh, that were just overwhelming for the average person to uh, to understand. So I can understand Rick's. Uh, it's on my desk. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we don't need to see that. Uh, so uh, I think. Since you've come on board, uh, Lloyd, it's certainly uh, we're getting more information on that and a clearer view of the budget, where we're at and where we're going. So it's uh, it's much appreciated. Thank you. Um, like I said, that's for me, it's a process. I don't feel like I'm there yet, but we're getting better. Um, you know, the senior management team was much more involved this year, I think, in, in the sense of instead of just here, Lloyd, here's my budget. There was some back and forth. There was a lot of discussion going from the much larger number that was originally submitted to what you guys were looking at. It was a back and forth process. And uh, I was pleasantly pleased. You know, you know, I'm an accountant. We, we tend to be black and white type of guys. And uh, it, it, was a, it was a good process. It was, you know, so we have something here that hopefully you, know, you guys can do your process now. I, I one thing I just forgot to mention uh, the updates, quarterly updates. Uh, we struggled a bit last year getting them on a regular basis. So uh, that's key to us to see where we're at at any given time. So I just wanted to throw that in to keep that in mind. Madam <laughs> Mayor. It was a promise I made that I failed on. I suggested last year that towards the end of the year we'd start seeing something a little more timely. Yeah. Um, I have better tools now, and I think we're you know, just progressing. We've been here a full year, um, doing the best we can. It, it's, if you forgive me for 15 seconds, the reporting requirements now for a municipality are, have become onerous. There are, you know, we don't know how many. We're starting, I actually started a little mini project on the side just a few days ago with Joshua, uh, the, the uh, deputy treasurer, to say, let's start keeping track of how many reports we're putting out, how many times somebody requests information, not necessarily internally, externally. How many times if somebody wants something and how much time and effort it takes? And my guess is I'm going to be shocked when you see the final kind of list because since I've been here, it's just, you know, I don't think I go through more than three or four days without getting an email saying, whoops, here's here's next week's report. Kind of thing like this ministry or that department or puts a lot of pressure in the system. It puts pressure on the experienced staff in particular because it's not just an exercise in putting some numbers together and signing off on it usually. But uh, you know, it's it's what competes with council, unfortunately, in my world. And if it's a legal requirement, it ends up at the top. Thank you. Absolutely, Councillor Dickens. Uh, to you, Madam Mayor, to uh, the Treasurer. Um, I appreciate how the budget process has been set up. Um, the number of meetings are exactly what we're going to uh, 
look at at each of those meetings. Um, and also I appreciate the presentation like others have mentioned. Um, one thing I would like is kind of guidance to the information with respect to where um, unpaid property taxes. Like it wouldn't be in here, but um, just before we get into the budget deliberations, because uh, I've been asked uh, by a number of people about that. So if we could just have an idea of uh, yeah, I mean, I can tell you right now, they're similar to what they are in the past. They're a little bit better in a sense that the number is not significantly lower right now, but the age of it is a lot better. Um, we have a list. We just, in November, we sent out, I'm going to say it's 100 letters. It may not have been quite 100 letters. Uh, kind of what we call kind of like final warning letters before we might act on it. Um, and, you know, those were picking people that were three years old, typically low payments or no payments and so that list is is kind of low-hanging fruit to take it to the next stage which is tax sales or those kind of behaviors we haven't quite got there yet because unfortunately the budget process chews up an awful lot of time of the the tax person's time because we have to do some estimates and stuff like that um, but it is absolutely in the in the pipeline and we're, we're we've actually discussed even using a Call it a contractor. It's not. It's a firm that specializes in this to help us because we really only have one tax person to take on that many uh, processes would be beyond her, her uh, timelines. Anyway, it's just a, it's a very short kind of speak to that part of it. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Sure. Um, could we get an idea? What amount? Not, not yeah, today, okay. what, what amount? Okay. Yeah, we'll, 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 Thank you. Come prepare with real numbers. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Did you have a follow-up? Uh, actually, I was. Yeah, actually, you. Uh, uh, I had one, but uh, Councillor Kyle, you kind of stole that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was on the table. But, but, but <laughs> and, uh, don't waste the time. I'm just uh, maybe uh, uh, go from the top and uh, thank the CEO. And uh, all the way down to the senior management team uh, for the job well done and putting this together for mm -hmm. us to uh, understand. You know, I really appreciate that. And I echo what uh, uh, Councillor Holmes said, uh, minus the dummy part of it, but everything <laughs> everything's well presented. And uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Anything further from council members? I'll have the reading of the motion. Moved by Councillor Rick Owens, seconded by Councillor Dana Granger. Be resolved that report number 2023, uh, FIN 3, entitled 2023 Operating and Capital Budget, be received for information. And finally, that deliberations regarding the 2023 Operating and Capital Budget commence on Tuesday, April 11th, 2023. All in favor? All opposed? None noted. Item carried unanimous. Item number seven considerations of notice of motions. Um, before we continue, um, as per Article 30 and Bylaw 15-075, being a bylaw to regulate the procedures of Council of the Corporation of the Town of Kirkland Lake, it states the preceding uh, presiding officer may state his or her opinion on any matter before Council prior to the commencement of debate. Should the presiding officer wish to take part in the debate, he or she shall vacate the chair and shall call upon acting chair to fit his or her seat until he or she resumes the chair. So that's why I don't really talk at council because it's my job just to kind of um, get the business, um, keep the business going. Um, but before I open the floor to debate on item 7.1, I will state the following. Um, I do preside over council meetings so that its business can be carried out effectively and efficiently. As per the Municipal Act Section 225A, my role is to provide leadership to Council without limiting Clause C to provide information and recommendations to Council with respect to the role of Council described in Clauses 224D and 1. So as my role, in my role of head as Council, um, I do wish to uh, assist members of council. The council of the town of Kirkland Lake receives delegations for information that makes decisions when staff bring a report. We pass delegation requests through staff 
because it's staff's role to give a full view, an unbiased report based on years of expertise and experience in the municipal realm. Without an unbiased report from staff, council runs the risk of unintended consequences, disruptions in relations with higher levels of government and partnerships with the communities we are actively working with. Though any request may seem benign, by not allowing staff to do their due diligence, council um, may put the municipality at risk. I've always said that members of the public are best served when they know what to expect when they deal with the corporation. Uh, delegations can expect council would allow staff to do their job. Though it may delay the outcome briefly, staff reports protect all members at this table. We did receive um, some pretty in-depth training regarding this, but I'm pleased to announce that we will um, be receiving additional training um, after budget as well. So with that, I open the floor for discussion. Councillor Shava, please present. Thank you very much uh, to you, Madam Mayor, to uh, everybody uh, here. Um, I think I'm going to save us a lot of time by uh, going through the backdrop of what led to this. Uh, I'm just going to go right into the uh, the motion. So uh, this motion you see in front of you, uh, to me, it is an acknowledgement of uh, volunteers. Uh, we have a lot of volunteers in our community, uh, maybe their sister, brother, neighbors, yourself, and whatnot. And they put an immense amount of time, unpaid time, uh, to help the causes that they believe in. So this motion is 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 one of those that's really part of that. That's that's part of that. Specifically, the volunteer group uh, that came here on February twenty first, uh, two uh, two thousand twenty three. The alliance came here, and. The issue they brought forward to us uh, is a concern to us. And it is to be noted that uh, the council delegated to Roma as well, just a few weeks before that, about the particular issue. So they came there asking for our support. So what, what we've done, uh, what this motion is doing basically is to uh, grant them that support as an acknowledgement of the time and effort they put into it. And that letter of support that we're gonna have with this will go to them. And we're not asking the letter to go to anyone else. So um, I leave it up to you uh, to do uh, to vote how you choose to vote. But the intent of this motion is to acknowledge the efforts of those volunteers uh, and taxpayers too. Uh, they are, uh, the effort is, is to acknowledge the efforts of those taxpayers and the volunteers that are working on the issue that's very pivotal uh, to this community. Some might say, well, listen, I don't care. The water over there is over there. The air over there is over there. But I can tell you that water and air, uh, my training tells me that uh, they have the no no boundaries. So once I pull it out, they're pulling it. So without further ado, that's the motion. And uh, if you want me to read that, Madam, uh, no, Madam you read that. So that's my uh, preamble to that. And uh, I leave that up to uh, you to uh, proceed. And I believe that uh, I did ask for a recorded vote. I'm not sure if uh, that uh, is still the case, but I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll my wish. Yep. Thank you very much. Uh, any yeah. questions or comments through? Council? Yes, Council. Madam Mayor, um, just for clarity, all, all that, from what I see, all that we're being asked to do is to uh, commend them for raising the awareness of this um, issue. Is that correct? That's basically yeah, yeah, what we're. Yeah, yes. Okay. Cause, um, yeah, because uh, personally, I didn't know too much about this issue. And then I looked into it after and uh, I saw petitions, I saw various. Um, uh, First Nations groups are writing about their concerns. So I was really grateful that for this presentation and um, I would support that we 
just thank them for making us aware. Um, uh -huh. Councilor Ranger. To you, Madam Mayor, um, it is my understanding that you're requesting a letter of to go to this volunteer group, correct? Yes. Like a hard copy document of council supporting? Yeah, yeah first, yes. I believe, do we have the letter? Uh, yeah. It was yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, we have the she, it letter. was, But that's not, I'm just making sure okay. that Dolly understands that it's more than just acknowledging volunteer time. That they're no, it wasn't the volunteer time. The oh, 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 oh. Okay. One person at a yeah. time, please. So it was Councillor Ranger's time. I just wanted to make it on record and clear that it wasn't, the okay. question wasn't answered or clarified, I believe, that you understand what the motion fully involves. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Shava. Oh, no, I think the people ahead of me. Okay. Uh, Councillor Owens. Um. So I've had a few people reach out to me on this one, and since it was announced in the paper that <clears throat> you were going to bring this uh, motion back, and it's on both sides of the of, of the issue. It's this. It's a divisive divisive issue in town, and I want to make it clear. I support. I, I fully understand what they're doing. I support what they're doing. I just find. There's a bit of pushiness on their part when, and I'm going to quote something they and this is where it gets to me in the paper, they said, and this is off the article where you brought back um, your intent to bring us back. We're a little disappointed that the town of Kirk and Link did not choose to also add their voice to the problem. That's an outright lie. And it pisses me off. And excuse my language, but it pisses me off when people choose to take information and manipulate it. We've got a motion here sent to the minister on March 17th by this council, moved by Mayor Kiley that stepped down from the chair and seconded by Councillor uh, White that got sent to the minister about this. We delegated to Roma the week before council. So to say that we do not support them is a lie outright lie and it's frustrating for us that pay full taxes and have the benefit of municipal representation and we can go i go to tim hortons in the morning and people have their opinion on everything that we do and they voice their opinion these people these individuals choose to live outside municipal boundaries they're unincorporated areas I'm sorry, I'm not going to jeopardize any chance of our municipality getting funding or having some type of backlash because they don't have a municipal authority to go to. Their issue is they need to deal with the province. They are the, the, the operating authority, if you want, in that area, and they are the ones that can solve this issue. Not the town of Kirkland Lake. We have supported them in the motion. We went to Roma. I support what they say. I just don't agree with the way they're going. Also, I can't support this motion. I, I think it would do more harm to the municipality than benefit, and especially when you manipulate information to say that, hey, they don't support us. Well, guess what? We did. That's it. Councilor Dykins. Uh, you, Madam Mayor, to Council. Um, I have read your letter, and, and I read it as, uh, we're commending the efforts towards raising awareness and striving short-term protection and cooperation with the municipal, sorry, Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing. So I do understand uh, what we're asking. We're not saying we agree with how they're going about things or whatever, but just that they will raise awareness and that we uh, support the uh, Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing to, to do their work as well. Councillor Owen. I didn't even get my hand. Yeah. Uh, to you, Madam Mayor, and I have my squeeze ball on hand uh, just for the record. Um, first off, I don't like being insulted in the paper, which is basically what I uh, I took that article, and it was uh, an accurate article. Um, in that Fred reported accurately on what was said. Um, 
and then ask me to endorse them after they insulted council? No, that doesn't work for me. Second off, I know a lot of volunteers in this town. Uh, I myself put in more than 30 years in minor hockey and, and uh, women's hockey in town, as well as years on Tober and Opera. And I'm just one of many. And when, when I made delegations or when other people made delegations to council, we didn't write letters to tell them they're wonderful people. It's not part of our procedure. It's not part of what we should be doing. Um, and I don't see this group as any different than any other group that makes a presentation to council. Um, we've already delegated to the minister and we've received assurances from the minister that this will be looked at in the spring. So this group now wants a letter, or we, we're proposing to send them a letter. Well, they're not, at, that letter's not gonna hang on the wall. That's not why they're buying it, to frame it and hang on their wall. They're buying it to promote their cause, which to me is a slap in the face when the minister's already assured us that something that is going to be invested. Like that's not how you treat the senior level of government. Um, in terms um, of environmental issues that they seem to like to bring up, uh, when I was looking for a recreational property in the area, I looked at two properties on Lake Canary. One of those properties had a four season cottage and a house that two septic systems, both in use, one approved, one not approved. I looked at another cottage on Lake Economy. Guess what? Septic system, not approved. And then they come here and they're worried about algae. I think they should look in their own backyard first. And some of the information that was sent out to me, the way I interpreted it, is that the regulations um, concerning development in unincorporated areas is that they be seasonal or that they be there because of their economic impact on that particular area. In other words, they're operating business that has positive impact on the area. Now, to me, that says there should be no permanent houses that are just houses in these unorganized townships. But we know there is. So maybe we should attack those people too. And from an environmental point of view, I, uh, I don't claim to be an environmental expert, but my brother was uh, very well respected uh, not just in this country, but in other countries as well, as an environmental expert. Um, and I consulted him often when I was a reporter. And a lot of the things that these people are doing is low carbon footprint on the environment. They're going to be self-supporting. They're going to grow their own food. They're going to have small houses. We're getting a little farther away from the um, request. Well, okay, but the request is we support somebody that is not made factual decisions. Okay, thank you, Councillor Kiley. Yeah, I I think part of the frustration from this group is now, according to Karam, it's at least two years since um, the. Issue was brought up and and uh, and has been brought to uh, six different ministries, and the lack of uh, timing. We know the government uh, moves in so, at, at a snail's pace, uh, and I think some of that frustration has come out from them, and they're looking to to garner more uh, support. Uh, I believe this uh, letter to be. Uh, acknowledging uh, what they've done to date and uh, 
uh, we support the same concerns that they have. Uh, and that's good enough for me. Thanks for that, Councilor oh. Ranger. Um, through you, through you, Madam Mayor, to Council. Um, I think my concern and issue, I wasn't at the presentation, I wasn't here for it, but I've done my, I believe I've done my homework. My concern is, and I'll put it in my perspective, is even at this level, we have a perceived chain of command when making requests for our own funding and levels of government and the steps that you need to take to follow proper chain of command. We have done that through our representation at conferences and through letters that have gone to the appropriate through the appropriate means. Um, I'm not in support of the letter. They are simply because we have done it through our own pathway and our own as the municipality and the corporation of town of Kirkland Lake. Um, they are from an unorganized township. They have their own pathway to go. They're looking um, for support and garnered it. As individuals, people can support and sign petitions, um, but as a representation of the corporation of town of Kirkland Lake and the council, um, I'm not in favor of adding a letter uh, with our name attached to it uh, because they have their own methods and we have ours and we followed ours. And if at some point there's a way through our chain of command that we can you know, address the town and our, our taxpayers concerns as far as this development outside of our lot tax lines, property lines, uh, we'll address them at that time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Shava. Yeah, thank you very much uh, to you, Madam Mayor. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to say uh, a few things. I, I've been uh, been in this town for a long time, and I can tell you that uh, uh, in the north, uh, most of the things that uh, we've got in the north here, most of the anything that we ever received in the north here, we receive them through uh, people just getting together and saying, "Well, we must make it happen," and it happens. I have greatest respect for all our allies, for now and all these other people. Uh, they do a, a good work, but uh, all these things, things will not get moved along in the North without people, people, ordinary people just saying they had enough. For example, we the train state, the uh, passenger railway, or the highway 11. So when people come here, uh, they took their time to come here and talk to us, about issues that we agree that is not a good thing. Uh, and they're asking for a letter of support because that was two things that they had a presentation. We had accepted a presentation and there was an issue of letter of support. Uh, and they're asking for a letter of support. And in my view, uh, we should be really acknowledging the efforts and time that those volunteers to put into it. So either we give them a letter of support today or not, that's not going to stop this group. They're going to do what they need to do. But I really want to make sure that we're not on the wrong side of history. Thank you very much. Any further comments or questions from council? Sir Owen? Madam Mayor, three years of clerk. May I have a request to record a recorded vote on this, please? Councilor Shadow has already requested that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll have the reading of the motion. Okay. So I just for oh, yeah. For procedure, I'll read the motion and then um, I'll have the mayor call for another set of comments before I do the report. Okay. Moved by Mayor Stacy, uh, sorry, wrong motion. Moved by <laughs> Councilor Vlad Chava, seconded by Councilor Patrick Kiley, whereas the Konogamy Watershed Ecological Alliance, KWEA, made a presentation to Council at its meeting of February 21st, 2023. Surrounding the detrimental effects of the Boreal Forest Medieval Villages, also known as BFMV. And whereas Council is aware that BFMV and other non for profit organizations have purchased large acreage in unorganized townships within the district of Temiskaming to build high volume, in quotes, off grid communities, close quotes. And whereas this council shared similar and the following concerns with the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Uh, MMH surrounding compliance with section 1.1.6 of the provincial policy statement, consultation with Indigenous groups, compliance with the Ontario Building Code and regulations, compliance with the health and safety laws and regulations, 
compliance with environmental laws and regulations, reviewing land use compatibility, impacts to resources, pressures on local services such as social, medical, and other community infrastructure and financial burden or constraints. Therefore, be it resolved that Council of the Corporation of the, the Town of Kirkland Lake commends the efforts of the KWEA in raising awareness of this matter. And finally, that the commendation letter attached to this motion be forwarded to the KWEA. Any further comments or questions before we take recorded vote? Councillor Shadow? Yeah, I just want to comment that uh, the this motion as read is what is being reflected on the letter going to the uh, to the group. Correct me if I'm wrong, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, if it's the will of council, I can read the proposed letter to council. I'm yeah. fine. I've read the report. We have the letter here. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's right there. Okay. Okay, so we'll call for the recorded vote. Um, yeah. A recorded I, vote. Yeah, that's me. Sorry, the clerk will explain. Okay. <laughs> so a recorded vote has been reflected on the part of Councillor La Chaba. Councillor Janice Ranger? No. Councillor La Chaba? Yes. Councillor Casey Owens? No. Councillor Dolly Dykins? Yes. Councillor Rick Owens? No. Councillor Pat Tyler? Yeah. Mayor Stacey White? No. The motion has been defeated. Thank you. At this time, I will ask Councillor Kitaba to take the chair to be acting mayor while I present my motion. Was I here with? Good afternoon. Item number 7.2, Mayor White, please. Okay, so this um, item came about because the town of Kirkland Lake received a request for a bursary from one of the high schools. Um, because of um, obvious um, issues with recruitment and retention in the public sector, um, and as per the items mentioned in the motion, I thought perhaps this would be a good time to begin a bursary program in the name of the town of Kirkland Lake for local students of both high schools, um, for those going into post-secondary education in public sector uh, and political sciences or associated fields. Um, so because we're in the middle of uh, deliberations, I wanted to put in principle and an amount that would not be cumbersome um, and could possibly go on perpetually. So we start it today and council in the future, um, knock wood that it doesn't get so bad that we can't afford a thousand dollars a year, that this will be something that this council starts and we can see it for decades into the future. Okay. Uh, are there any questions for yes? Um, just through you, <coughs> acting chair, uh, to you, Mayor Husi. <laughs> um, just for clarity, you say it's sum up to a hundred dollars, but is that divided between the two schools, or is that a thousand? Sorry, a thousand dollars per no. school or divide. divided? Okay, and just uh, are we clarifying or being specific that it be? political science at this point or um no so the policy the will policy. come back yeah okay the policy will come back via staff right so this is just in principle okay so, so that okay. allows them to give an amount um and they will write up the policy itself uh yeah, yeah, yeah. so then that will come back to us at some point yeah and we'll, perfect thank you thank you yes yes to you acting mayor to council, um, most of my volunteer work has been with young people in this community. And I think it's uh, totally appropriate that we, you know, we're we're supposed to be an age-friendly community, which generally speaking, you think of seniors, but age-friendly is age-friendly. And uh, I think it's, it, it's a great idea to show support to our youth. Um, and who knows, they may just come back. And end up working here, <clears throat> but you know, I mean, we see terrible things on the news about young people, but the vast majority of these people and the vast majority 
and Kirk and Lake are really good young people, and I've worked with a lot of them, and I think it's time we show them that we support them. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Ranger. Through act acting Just there. Right. <laughs> I wanted to you asking their um, comments. Um, I work in post-secondary environment. I am so happy to um, see this. I can tell you from experience that scholarships are absolutely needed for uh, post-secondary education. If anything, I would hope that this amount may increase in the future. Um, and uh, if staff need any support for me for my day job as to what a bursary could look like, I happily will um, support them with any questions they may have. They can contact me directly. Um, uh, I absolutely agree with Councillor Owens that the message of, you know, support to somebody who wants to go on, whether they want to stay and go to a local college <laughs> or on to post-secondary anywhere else, we hope that the expectation is, and we do want youth to return um, to their northern communities. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy to see this. Thank you. We'll, we'll strike out the local college. Through you, Acting Chair uh, to Council, I think this is timely as well. I just uh, read a report about the gap between North South education and the availability for education for. Uh, young people in the north they say it's generally they don't go right after high school it's later and, and their possibilities are are um are more difficult so i know this may be symbolic but i think it's really important that uh, as a town we show support to young people who are pursuing education yeah anyone else can i make a comment yeah yeah, I'm sure yeah. Okay. yeah I, I think it's a great idea i uh, I work at college for 30, 30 years or so, not a local college, but well, a college. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, I, I did uh, left a few uh, uh, scholarships uh, down that she will be coming very soon. Uh, it's good to uh, really assist young people, yeah. uh, underprivileged uh, students and uh, minority students and all of that. Uh, I, I know uh, treasurer, the money is tight and all of that stuff, but you know, uh, this would be a money well spent, in my view. Uh, hopefully, we can get uh, uh, businesses in town. Now that we're coming out of uh, COVID, you know, slowly we can get business in town to at least uh, help the the high schools, you know, that the kids that cannot uh, make it to for secondary education. I know I have two. I have two for secondary education, and uh, burning a holes in my. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Any more questions before we uh, read the uh, motion? None? Uh, what you got, please carry on. Sure. Moved by Mayor Stacy White, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen. Whereas the town of Curtin Lake received a request for donation from ESCBN, a Casagonda Catholic Novelins Noel, for graduation bursaries. And whereas the town of Curtin Lake has begun budget planning and deliberations for 2023. And whereas, according to the Municipal Youth Engagement Handbook, in, in quote, the need for municipalities to encourage active citizenship among you, young residents is clear from the evolving state of the Canadian workforce, workforce, close quote. And whereas, according to the Canadian Association of Municipal Administrators 2019, uh, the quote, attracting and retaining qualified employees ranks only second to the economy as the most significant threat to municipal organizations today, close quote. Therefore, we resolve that Council for the Corporation of the Town of Kirkland Lake. Hereby request an information report be presented investigating the viability of an annual birthday program to be dis distributed equally to both local secondary schools and an amount that would be not be that would not be burdensome within the budget parameters, and that a policy be drafted and presented for implementation in the 2023 graduation year. And finally, that the sum of up to one thousand dollars be approved in principle from the portion of the mayor and council operating budget in 2023 and future years upon such policy approval. So just to make it clear, the policy is coming back to us. All right, this is not a finger on the amount. And I call the questions, all in favor of the motion? Anybody against? Motion is carried. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you, Councillor Stava. Item number eight. Introduction. Oh. Uh, I have a notice of the. Um, it's later. It's later. No, yeah. these are consideration. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Um, number eight. Introduction, reading, and consideration of bylaws. Moved by Councillor Patrick Riley, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen, be it resolved that the following bylaw be read a first, second, third time, third time number class signed by the mayor, municipal clerk, and the seal of the corporation to be a fifth third June. Bylaw number 2317, made a bylaw to appoint the deputy chief building official and property standards officer for the corporation of the town of Berkeley. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimous. 8.2. Moved by Councillor Casey Owens, seconded by Councillor Lad Shaba, be it resolved that the following bylaw be ready first, second, and third time numbered pass signed by the mayor and clerk and the seal of the corporation be affixed there too. Bylaw number 2318 being a bylaw repealing bylaws 2198 and 2230, which authorize the sale of land located at 3 McKelvey Avenue and lot 74 and 75 M112 on Poultry Street, respectively. All in favor? Opposed? Carried unanimous. 8.3. Moved by Councillor Janice Ranger, seconded by Councillor Patrick Kiley. Be a result that the following bylaw be read a first, second, and third time. Number passed, signed by the Mayor and Municipal Clerk, and the Seal of the Corporation be affixed there too. Bylaw number 2319, being a bylaw to authorize the Mayor and Municipal Clerk to execute four early access agreements with on a Hydro One Network Sync. All in favor? Opposed? Item carried unanimous, 8.4. Moved by Councillor La Chava, seconded by Councillor Casey Owens. Be resolved that the following bylaw be read a first, second, and third time. Number class signed by the Mayor and Clerk and the Seal of Corporation. Bylaw number 2320, being a bylaw authorizing the Mayor and Municipal Clerk to execute documents related to Council's endorsement of the Corporation of the Town of Kirkland with drinking water. All in favor? Opposed? Not voting, carried unanimously, 8.4. Moved by Councillor Casey Owens. Questions from council staff, item 9.1. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Councillor Shava, uh, status update, proposed chat to use playground project. The recommendation is coming from, um, no, sorry, the report is coming from CAO Alan Sweet. Thank you, Madam Mayor, to uh, member of council. Um, after council approved the location of the playground last year, uh, our planning services uh, division requests requested that locate be completed so the staff could figure out how much space we had to work with for the structure. Now, although there was follow up by the town, locates were not completed in 2022. Um, they were months behind, and that we experienced similar delays to that of the other customers. The director of public works. Uh, this year, we'll be putting in the locate request again, and as soon as this step is completed, we can then get quotes and equipment that would fit in the space we have. Yeah. No dollars was spent in 2022, so we are looking to get those locates, and it just took it's out of our hands. Mm -hmm. But we do intend to get those locates and get this moving. Thank you. Item 9.2. Oh, sorry, motion. Any questions? Yeah, motion. uh, um, yes, I'll start. Okay, no, sir, Tyler. Oh, I usually go like this. Yeah. Would you say locate so you talk about things like gas lines and. Yes. Wonder. I, I assume that's what you meant, but I, I didn't know if you're talking like property lines. No, no it, you might have been there. Uh, Councilor, yes, it would be the gas lines hydro sector. Yeah, okay, thank you. Councilor Kiley, did you have your hand up? No. Okay, Councilor Shaba. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. CEO, for the update. Uh, I just want to know are the funds for this uh, playground that they've been all in place or is something that's uh, still in progress? We're trying to uh, secure them uh, for the initiation and uh, subsequent completion of the project. Is that a thing to share with us? Uh, if you might make member council, I have to check with our treasurer, but I think maybe the funds are being ordered forward. But I don't know. that's exactly what's happening. There was no outside funds identified for the project, so last year it was part of the budget through through council's motion. 
So what happens if the ones are unexpended, they go into the one of the reserves and they sit there until the project starts up again. So it'll be funded out of reserves this year. Thank you. Okay. Anything further? I'll have the reading of the motion. Moved by Councillor Lad Chaba, seconded by Councillor Patrick Kiley, be resolved that Council receive the status update on the proposed Chappie Hughes playground, <laughs> excuse me, uh, project from the Chief Administrative Officer for information purposes. All in favor? All opposed? Now noted, carrying unanimous. Item 9.2, Councillor Chaba, the Town of Kirkland Lake and the Multicultural Centers Relationship Assistance and Liaison. Again, I'll um, toss it over to Alan Smith, CAO. Just uh, just a point oh, of a, sorry? just a point of a clarification. I I uh, I call them multicultural center. In fact, they're a multicultural group. So uh, it's okay. just that. Uh, there we go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, to members of the council. Um, currently, uh, as far as assistance goes, we do not provide any financial assistance to them. However, our director of economic development, uh, Wolf, um, he is our liaison with them. For example, if there is a project or something in that realm is happening, uh, Wolf will normally be in attendance. If there's an event, Wolf will we'll go to the, the attendance of that event. So uh, he is our liaison. Again, we do it. We don't provide any financial assistance uh, to, the, to the group. Okay. Okay, um, the um, the group itself has been around for uh, a long time, and uh, there's no question that we've been doing a lot of work for the new people coming to uh, Kirkland Lake. So um, when they do have uh, events and activities, so we are we are aware of them through our liaison, so that we can be part of it. You indicate that we have a liaison. That's what I didn't add. I didn't. And they have events and activities. I go to the one in Timmins at the moment. But, you know, uh, I try to go to this one, but when they have events and activities there, is that something that our liaison will attend and report back to us, or what is it? What is the role of the liaison? I think, Madam Mayor, to members of the council, yeah. the liaison is a. Um, I was going to say it's more of like an informal relationship, really. Uh, you know, it's not like the official come back and the council unless it was a uh, something that we deemed council should be made aware of. Uh, recently, we did meet with them regarding to um, promote uh, um, income or awareness. And, uh, so we're working with them on a couple things. So, um, but in an official capacity, um, you know, we we try to. Maintain that relationship and attend events when we can, basically. Uh, yeah. Through you to validation and bringing up the director. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. 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 um, Ms. also is the time gets involved in the activities of the group and I would like to speak to that. Thank, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Through you to the rest of council. We were the recipient of um, a bit of a delegation to some staff from the Ukrainian community a little while ago, and they had brought up some really good ideas of things that we may want to become involved in that would assist newcomers to Kirkland Lake. And it wouldn't just be the Ukrainians, it would be anybody who's a newcomer. It could be a newcomer from Timiskaming Shores to Kirkland Lake, or it could be someone of a foreign background. And they had a number of ideas. Some were outside of our scope, some were very easy for us to probably complete in the very near future. So one of the ones that we would like to work on that would be done by staff in-house would be to have information available to newcomers to Kirkland Lake about what does Kirkland Lake have to offer. So it could be as simple as we have a public library. If you live within the, the municipality, it's free for your use. These are the hours. We do have recycling. We box days fall on these weeks. We have an outdoor rink, it's free for use. So it might be those types of things. And we would like to do it so it's not like the program guide that the complex offers, where it's, you know, you have swimming lessons for level three-year-olds on Tuesdays. It would be basically, we have a community complex. This is what it offers. Here's the website, here's a phone number um, of the different amenities we have in Kirkland Lake. So we thought that would be a really good first step. Um, we have all the data, we just have to put it together. And we talked to the different department heads and managers to find out what are the common things that you get asked 
when there's a newcomer to Copeland Lake. So we thought that would be something that we could easily do in-house. Um, and it would be fairly timeless in the fact that it wouldn't have dates and times and prices. It would just have information and we could update it regularly. Councillor Ranger. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, to uh, Ms. Sackrider, I'd like to make the suggestion um, that uh, you can add a button on your website, new to Kirkland Lake, click here, and it would provide all that information. It's uh, something that we have specific to our international students at Northern College. We gear orientation packages um, because they are newcomers oh. and there's a lot more involved uh, a domestic student or an international student coming. So um, that can be a, instead of like hard copies yeah. it all being available, but it, an easy click on the website for um, things that they would need. But I think it's a great. Yeah. Councillor Owens. I just want to make sure that like, Kirkland Lake's got several groups that help or benefit our community so i would hate for this one to be singled out or get preferential preferential treatment versus other so any group that wants a partnership with the town can have that partnership can approach the town and have the discussion not just this one specifically right no to be better yes correct okay. and it's important to note that i think we're talking about two separate entities so the question was asked about the multicultural group specifically. They have not come specifically to talk to myself or um, staff. That was um, the Ukrainian council specifically and um, a local, very, very wonderful volunteer, Michelle Whelan, who just does so much for uh, the Ukrainian community. Um, and it is something, um, Immigration is something that comes up time and time again. I, I uh, reported on it several times in my um, mayor's report. That is something that we're going to have to think about in our strategic plan um, moving forward. So I appreciate that Councillor Shava asked the question. Is there anything specific to the question that was asked? As we do, we get off topic. <laughs> so Councillor Owen, do you have anything to add? Uh, I'm not sure now. <laughs> um, no, I think one comment that uh, Ms. Sackrider made was that this booklet would be good for everybody, yeah, even if you just yeah. moved from Tamiskaming Shores. And I want to emphasize that because as I was sitting there, I was thinking, yeah, like normally a chamber will do that, but often chambers do that. They have a welcome, well, they used to. I don't know, but I'm not up to date. And, and they would, you know, busy with a basket of stuff and it would have all this information in it. So I think, you know, in, in addition to people immigrated to Kirkland Lake, it would, it, it would be ideal for like town hall complex, um, mm -hmm. the library, uh, the library, the museum. Yeah, I think it's a low cost, yeah. effective way of helping. Yep. Councillor Kiley? Yeah, I, I think this is great. Uh, we don't have a welcome way, I mean, like we used to have in the old days. So it, it takes the place of that and uh, uh, it welcomes immigrants, people from within the province or outside the province. Uh, great idea. Councillor Shava, anything to add? Yeah, um, I just want to show you, Madam Mayor. I just want to, uh, don't distract me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just want to add that uh, maybe we should look at, uh, uh, in putting what you're saying together, we should look at best practices from maybe the city of Timmins and the North Bay. Uh, they've got something going uh, there to uh, welcome uh, new people to, to their cities, not just from uh, foreign countries, would be maybe nearby town, mm -hmm. or whatnot. So maybe we should look into that. And, yeah. Put that together. Yeah. Thank you. So, Alan's going to speak yeah. to that. Okay. Madam Mayor, um, right now, uh, our director of economic development does sit on the rural northern immigration program yes. as part of that. So, uh, we are kept in the loop that way. And uh, that's a very worthwhile program. And uh, we're glad to be part of it. Okay. Yeah. Anything further from council? I'll have the reading of the motion. Uh, move thank by you, council. Uh, thank you, um, Adam Sackroy. Holy Mac. <laughs> We're done. Moved by Councilor Lad Java, seconded by Councilor Janet Frazier, being resolved that Council receive information surrounding the Town of Kirkland Lake's relationship with the multicultural group. 
uh, assistance and liaison from administration for information purposes. All in favor? Opposed? Item carried. Item number 10, notice of motion. Councillor Kiley. <laughs> Want to uh, promote, uh, present a notice of motion on homelessness and uh, hopefully affordable housing if we can stretch that into it at the next uh, meeting. Thank you. Item 10.2 Myself, I will be introducing uh, a motion regarding Ontario School Board trustee elections, and both of these will be coming forth at the regular council meeting of April 4th. Okay, <clears throat> item number 11, council reports. Any council members have anything to report since we last met? Uh, I don't have a report, but clarification from uh, uh, Madam Sarr. We got all this correspondence from you uh, about uh, who to read, must read, and all of that. And there's one that uh, uh, the post of office. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, and. So when we get this, are we supposed to introduce a motion similar to that to go around or is it purely for our information? Through you, Madam Mayor, to all of council and Councillor uh, Travis specifically. So you'll note that we've re been receiving, uh, council members have been uh, putting forward more notices of motions as of late, that they're stemming from that correspondence. So any member of council that wishes to bring forward any of those items uh, the notice of motion to be discussed at this table amongst uh, your individual council, as your sorry, your respective council, you may do so by bringing a notice of motion based on that correspondence that you receive. Oh, okay, I would like to bring one on this one. Okay, uh, yeah. okay. okay so this is the spot to do it before we one the report. Okay, so yeah, you can announce it now. Yeah, yeah, go yeah. Ahead. Well, I'm going to announce it that uh, I will bring a uh, motion regarding the rules of office. Okay. For the April 4th meeting. That's correct. Okay. Okay. Now moving on to councillors' reports. Any council member with anything to report since last meeting? Okay. So I shall move on to mine. Uh, since our last meeting, dated March 7th, 2023, the Office of the Mayor has attended the luncheon and tour of EPC Canada, which is the old Nordax, in Dane to unveil their the renovations of their plant. Uh, this company has been in operation since the 70s under different management, but they remain a staple industry within our area, providing employment to at least 25 individuals. We attended a meet and greet in New Lisford with Associate Minister of Transportation Stan Cho on the 14th. This was an intimate gathering of about 28 invited guests. The biggest thing to note is that the town of Kirkland Lake had a reserved spot at the head of the table beside the president of Ponon, Danny Whelan, and one seat away from the associate um, minister himself. I believe this does show Kirkland Lake is moving in the right direction. We also attended the unveiling of the recently purchased rail cars, which will be servicing freight customers in the area. Um, with uh, members of uh, Ontario Northland, the Associate Minister um, and Director of Rail Transportation. Uh, that was in Inglehart on the 15th, and each of these rail cars takes four transports worth of load, which ultimately makes our highway safer. Um, I joined in Northern Ontario's Women Caucus. After the 2022 election, women represent over 40 mayors and over 222 council seats across the province. We will continue to encourage and support women in politics. Kirkland Lake now holds the co-chair position for the 2S LGBTQ plus steering committee. The steering committee is part of Timmins Pride, whose mission is to unite and engage individuals and organizations to educate, advocate, and support the 2S LGBTQ plus community in Timmins, and surrounding areas. This is another positive partnership with our neighboring communities. I also drafted the 2023 Convocation Letter of Northern for Northern College. I want to personally thank Councillor Dykins as I reached out to members of Council with Ties to the College 
as I was having some major writer's block. Um, and though she thought she couldn't help much, what she provided was certainly inspiring. She was always too humble, but her help was greatly appreciated. Um, and I want to commend the Rhodes team on their excellent service. Saturday morning before 8 a.m., the sidewalks from Chappie Hughes to at least 25 Cleesmere um, were graded or were um, down to, no, sorry, were cleared from Chappie to Civic and sound, sanded in the downtown core. This does increase the safety of pedestrians in our community and your efforts did not go unnoticed. So excellent job. And now finally for the best part, a reminder that tomorrow we will be having two school visits, 10 a.m. with a class from St. Jerome and 1.30 with Central School. And I hope all members of council who have time can pop in. Apparently the kindergartners know all of our names and they're very excited to see us. So, you know, truly <laughs> sharing what we do with the community is the best part of sitting on council. So thank you for that. I'll have the reading of the motion. Moved by Councillor Casey Owen, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen. A result of the verbal updates from uh, members of council to receive. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. Very unanimous. Item number 12, inform additional information. There is none noted. We will now take a 10 minute uh, break and then we will go into the second. Okay, so we are reconvening item number 13, closed session. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Dolly Dykin, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen. Be it resolved that Council adjourn in camera pursuant to section 239.2 of the Municipal Act 2001 as amended to discuss personal matters about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, labor relations or employee negotiations, advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose. Information explicitly supplied in confidence to the municipality or local board by Canada, a province or territory, or a crown agency of any of, of them. And a position, plan, procedure, criteria, or instruction to be applied to a negotiation carried on or to be carried on by or on behalf of the municipality or local board at 649 for the following reasons. Item 13.1, Community Complex Retrofit Project Federal Funding. Item 13.2, Fire Services Update. All in favor? Okay, so we now shall reconvene an open session. Madam Clerk. Okay. The council reconvene an open session at 724 p.m. Moved by Councillor Rick Owen, seconded by Councillor Patrick Riley. All in favor? Opposed? Item carried unanimous. What uh there was no declaration of pecuniary interest in, in camera. Item number 14.1, approval of the community complex retrofit project. Moved by Councillor Casey Owen, seconded by Councillor Janice Ranger, be it resolved that report number 2023 CS001 entitled approval of the community complex retrofit project be received. And finally, that council approved the community complex retrofit project totaling $2,992,990 for the following reasons. Complete with 80% federal funding. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. Item carried unanimous. Item 15.1, uh, confirmation bylaw. Moved by Councillor Janice Ranger, seconded by Councillor Rick Owen, be resolved with the following bylaw be read a first, second, and third time number to pass signed by the mayor and clerk and the seal of the corporation be affixed thereto, bylaw number 23021, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council at its meeting held Tuesday, March 23, 2018. All in favor? Opposed? None noted. Item carried unanimous. Item 16, adjournment. Moved by Councillor Dolly Dykin, seconded by Councillor Patrick Riley. Be it resolved that this was the at seven yeah. Thank you, one and all. All in favor? None opposed? Item here.